Good morning, Pastor Shane here, Worship Without Walls. I'd like to thank you for joining me here on this blessed Sunday for worship, for word, and for prayer. Before we get into our service this morning, I'd like to thank each and every member of Troop 20 and the community who came out to help us collect food for the members in the community in Hurley who helped donate food and for the food pantries and the people that will receive that food that we take a moment to share a prayer to them and to bless them and may that food become bountiful for them. It was a little under 5,000 pieces that was collected this year by the troop. And again, it was spread between multiple places in the community. So again, with a heartfelt thank you to all of those who came out and supported. Let us pray. God of faithful surprises, throughout the ages you have made known your love and power in unexpected ways and places. May we daily perceive the joy and wonder of your abiding presence and offer our lives in gratitude for our redemption. Amen. We turn to 570 in our red hymnal, words to live by. Since you have been raised with Christ, set your hearts on the things above, not on earthly things. For your life is now hidden with Christ in God. Put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature. Do not lie to each other, since you have taken off your old self with its practices And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge, in the image of its creator, Christ is all and in all. Therefore, as God's chosen people, holy and dearly loved, clothe yourselves with compassion, kindness, humility, gentleness, and patience. Bear with each other and forgive whatever grievances you may have against one another. Forgive as the Lord forgave you. Over all these virtues put on love, which bind them all together in perfect unity. Let the peace of the Christ rule in your hearts, since as members of one body you have been called to peace. And be thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly, as you teach and admonish one another with all wisdom. And as you sing psalms, hymns, and spiritual songs with gratitude in your hearts to God, whatever you do, whether in word or deed, do it all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God the Father through him. We begin this morning with our opening hymn, He has made me glad. I'll enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for He has made me glad, He has made me glad, oh, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad, He has made me glad, oh, He has made me glad, I will rejoice for He has made me glad. will enter His gates with thanksgiving in my heart, I will enter His courts with praise. I will say to you this day, Lord has made, I will rejoice for he has made me glad. 
He's made me glad, oh, he's made me glad. Will I rejoice for he has made me glad? He's made me glad, oh, he's made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. We'll say this is the day that the Lord has made. And rejoice for he has made me glad. He's made me glad, oh, he's made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He's made me glad, oh, he's made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Amen. Please join me in our affirmation of faith. We believe in Jesus Christ the Lord, who is promised to the people of Israel, who came in the flesh to dwell among us, who announced the coming of the rule of God, who gathered disciples and taught them, who died on the cross to free us from sin, who rose from the dead to give us life and hope, who reigns in heaven at the right hand of God, who comes to judge and bring justice to victory. We believe in God, his Father, who raised him from the dead, who created and sustains the universe, who acts to deliver his people in times of need, who desires all men everywhere to be saved, who rules over the destinies of men and nations, who continues to love men even when they reject him. We believe in the Holy Spirit, who is the form of God present in the church, who moves men to faith and obedience, who is the guarantor of our deliverance, who leads us to find God's will in the word, who assists those whom he renews in prayer, who guides us in discernment, and who impels us to act together. We believe that God has made us his people to invite others to follow Christ to encourage one another to deeper commitment, to proclaim forgiveness of sins and hope, to reconcile men to God through word and deed, to bear witness to the power of love over hate, to proclaim Jesus the Lord over all, to meet the daily tasks of life with purpose, to suffer joyfully for the cause of right, to the ends of the earth, to the end of the age, and to the praise of his glory. Amen and amen. We're going to read from 690, which is Psalm 1. Blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked, or stand in the way of sinners, or sit in the seat of mockers. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and on his law he meditates day and night. He is like a tree planted by the streams of water, which yields its fruit in seasons, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever he does prospers, not so the wicked. They are like chaff that the wind blows away. Therefore the wicked will not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Let us open our Bibles now to Isaiah 65, verses 17 through 25. For behold, I create new heavens and new earth, and the former shall not be remembered or come to mind but be glad and rejoice forever in what I create. 
For behold, I create Jerusalem as a rejoicing, and her people a joy. I will rejoice in Jerusalem, and joy in my people. The voice of weeping shall no longer be heard in her, nor the voice of crying. No more shall an infant from there live but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be a curse. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. For as the days of a tree, so shall be the days of my people. And my elect shall long enjoy the work of their hands. They shall not labor in vain, nor bring forth children for trouble. For they shall be the descendants of the blessed of the Lord, and their offspring with them. It shall come to pass that before they call, I will answer. And while there they are still speaking, I will hear. The wolf and the lamb shall feed together. The lion shall eat straw like the ox, and dust shall be the serpent's food. They shall not hurt nor destroy in all my holy mountain, says the Lord. Here ends our first reading from the book of Isaiah today. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> Our next hymn is, is called, He is Exalted, and I'm going to try to do my best with this one. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise him, he is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise his name, exalted forever, exalted, he is Lord forever, his truth shall reign, heaven and earth rejoice in his holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. I will praise Him. He is exalted forever, exalted, and I will praise His name. He is Lord forever, His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is the Lord forever, His truth shall reign. Heaven and earth rejoice in His holy name. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. He is exalted, the King is exalted on high. Amen and Amen. Our next reading from the book of Isaiah comes from Isaiah chapter 12. In that day you will say, O Lord, I will praise you. Though you were angry with me, your anger is turned away, and you comfort me. Behold, God is my salvation. 
for Yah, the Lord, is my strength and song. He also has become my salvation. Therefore, with joy, you will draw water from the wells of salvation. And in that day, you will say, praise the Lord, call upon his name, declare his deeds among the peoples. Make mention that his name is exalted. Sing to the Lord, for he has done excellent things. This is known to all the earth. Cry out and shout, O inhabitant of Zion, for great is the Holy One of Israel in your midst. Here ends our second reading from Isaiah for this morning. Thanks be to God. Let us pray. God of mercy and healing, you hear the cries of those in need. Receive these petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know peace, comfort, and courage. Dear Heavenly Father, we lift up to you our sons and our daughters who struggle day in and day out with unseen attacks unseen illness through mental health. May you, they be able to find their peace in you, O oh Lord, their comfort, their strength. May you continue to watch over them, Lord. We lift up to you, Lord, our sisters who have had surgeries and are still healing, that you might lay your healing hands down upon them and watch over them in their times of need and healing. Lord, we thank you for everything that you've given to us and everything you've given to this ministry. We continue to look to you for your strength and your courage to radiate through us that we may be able to speak your prophetic word now and always. Through the love of your Son, Jesus Christ, we look to you, life-giving God, that you heal our lives, that we may acknowledge your wonderful deeds and offer you thanks from generation to generation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen and amen. Our next hymn is forth in thy name, O Lord, I go. And hide my 
simple heart above above the thorns and choking care the glutted babes of worldly love my right hand, whose eyes my inmost substance see, and labor on at thy command, and offer all my works to Give me to bear thy easy yoke, and every moment watch and pray, and still to things eternal look, and hasten to thy glorious day. For the delightfully employ whatever thy bounteous grace hath given, and run my course with Closely walk with thee to heaven. Amen. And amen. We open up our blue hymnal, 361, to my God, I love thee. My God, I love thee, not because I hope for heaven thereby, nor yet because who love thee not must die eternally. Thou, O oh my Jesus, thou didst me upon the cross embrace, for me didst bear the nails and spear and manifold disgrace. Then why, O oh blessed Jesus Christ, should I not love thee well, not for the hope of winning heaven or for escaping hell? Even so, I love thee and will love and in thy praise will sing solely because thou art my God and my eternal King. We turn now into our Bible to our scripture passage for today from 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, verses 6 through 13. But we command you, brethren, in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, that you withdraw from every brother who walks disorderly and not according to the tradition which he received from us. For you yourselves know how you ought to follow us, for we were not disorderly among you, nor did we eat anyone's bread free of charge, but worked with labor and toil night and day that we might not be a burden to any of you. 
not because we do not have authority, but to make ourselves an example of how you should follow us. For even when we were with you, we commanded you this, if anyone will not work, neither shall he eat. For we hear that there are some who walk among you in a disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ, that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But as for you, brethren, do not grow weary in doing good. Here ends our second reading for today. Thanks be to Christ. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let us continue forward in prayer. Holy God, who calls us to the journey, it is so easy for us to become distracted so that we wander off the path that you have put before us. The chaos of the world around us catches our attention. And we neglect the inner journey that keeps us closer to you. As we set aside this time to bring our gifts to you, may you draw our attention back to the wisdom and the guidance that you put before us. And may it lead us to embrace that will carry us to kingdom presence. In Christ we pray. Amen. And brothers and sisters, at this time, if you feel so compelled to tie with this ministry, please check out our webpage, click the link. If you can't find the tithe directly on there, please feel free to message us or email us and we will help you. Also, any of our platforms where we have merchandise to sell, please know that all the proceeds that come back from that help this ministry function, help us support our Bible ministry, shipping Bibles to those who are in need of Scripture. Our tithing that we give to other entities and so forth. So just know that whatever comes in goes back out to help others in need. We turn once more now to our Bibles. To the Gospel of our Lord for this morning. From the Gospel of Luke chapter 21 verses 5 through 19. Then, as some spoke of the temple, how it was adorned with beautiful stones and donations, he said, These things which you see the days will come in which not one stone shall be left upon another that shall not be thrown down. So they asked him, saying, Teacher, but when will these things be? And what sign will there be? When these things are about to take place. And he said, Take heed that you not be deceived. For many will come in my name, saying, I am he. And the time has drawn near. Therefore do not go after them. But when you hear of wars and commotions, do not be terrified. For these things must come to pass first. But the end will not come immediately. Then he said to them, Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. And there will be great earthquakes in various places, and famines, and pestilence, 
And there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. But before all these things, they will lay their hands on you and persecute you, delivering you up to the synagogues and prisons. You will be brought before kings and rulers for my name's sake. But it will turn out for you as an occasion for testimony. Therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. For I will give you a mouth and wisdom which you which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. You will betray even by parents and brothers, relatives and friends, and they will put some of you to death. And you will be hated by all for my name's sake, but not a hair of your head shall be lost. By your patience... <coughs> Sorry. By your patience possesses your souls. Here ends our reading from the gospel of our Lord. Praise be to Christ. And this brings me to our message for this morning. Our message of together. And now, as we embark on this journey talking about the word together, we first must look at what we think of when we say together, right? When we look at things from the human or from the flesh, we look at together, such as a cup with coffee, coffee with creamer. They go together, right? We look at things from the standpoint of, oh, those two people look good together. You and I belong together, right? We think of it from that flesh standpoint, because that is what we know, that is what we see. In some cases, we use that term together in negative as well, right? Maybe we are trying to get people to join us so we can march together for a purpose. Sometimes that purpose could be for good, sometimes that purpose could be for bad. It depends on what it is. This weekend, I had the opportunity to spend time coming together with my daughter as she celebrated her friend's birthday. We also came together as a community, as a troop, as past Eagle Scouts to help receive the gifts that were given by the community for those who were in need. And yet, in today's gospel, we see this almost term together from a different standpoint. We see it from the standpoint of our words. And I first want to give you a word to go with each letter of the word together. So we have our T and we're going to use the word trust, right? Because when we are asked to trust, we're asked to trust who, right? We're asked to trust God. Okay. When we look at the letter O, I'm going to simplify it by just saying on. We're going to trust on. G, we're going to trust on God's E, everlasting, T, timing. 
We're going to trust on God's everlasting time and we're going to trust on God's everlasting help. And we're going to trust on God's everlasting eternal righteousness. So we have T, trust, O, on, G for God's, E for everlasting, T for timing, H for help, E for eternal, and R for righteousness. Okay? And now I want to ask you the question that I've been working up towards asking, which is, have you ever been at a loss of words? Have you ever found a time in your life where you couldn't find the right words to say? You couldn't find the right response at the time. Whether you had somebody surprise you, maybe someone told you something you weren't prepared for, but you couldn't find those right responses. To be honest, I had a little difficulty with this week's sermon because I was sitting there reading the scripture and I was sitting there and preparing like I do every week. And yet I couldn't find the right words to speak this morning to you all. It was almost as if I was that younger version of myself four years ago, sitting there looking at scripture, looking at what I thought I wanted to say, and ultimately just writing down a script and reading it. Whereas this morning, that's not well enough to do but when we sit there and think of the word together we have to think of it in a bigger circumstance than just you and I what we need to think of it in is we need to think of it in the form of us and God and us and Christ Jesus when we think of righteousness we also think of redemption, right? We have redemption through his righteousness. Redemption is just another form of forgiveness. And in our scripture today, we have a key verse that says, verse 15, that I will give you a mouth and wisdom which all your adversaries will not be able to contradict or resist. So what happens here is Christ is talking to his disciples and he's trying to let them know what's to come, per se. That he predicts the destruction of the temple and then he goes on to talk about the signs and the times for the end of the age. He's talking about what we see in Revelation later on. But he's predicting it to and talking about it ahead of time to his disciples. And here he's looking at it from the point of this is what's to come. But I don't want you to dwell on this. I just gave you horrible news. Think about this for a second. Think about this in your life right now. What happens if you get a phone call from, say, your doctor or a loved one or a friend and they give you the worst news ever? You break down in tears sometimes. You get mad, you get angry, you get frustrated, whatever it might be. But ultimately, you, there's some sort of an emotional effect from the cause or from what happened. Whereas Christ is sitting there and saying to his disciples, I have now given you this horrible news and I expect you to go forth Because he goes, therefore, settle it in your hearts not to meditate beforehand on what you will answer. I've given you this horrible news. I've given you the fact that you are going to be persecuted in my name. That you are going to be brought to the priests in my name and possibly put to death. Some of you may even be put to death. But I don't want you to meditate on what to say back because ultimately I am going to give you the right words and knowledge at that time to say back to them. So they will have nothing to say. 
And what fits better together than words and wisdom or knowledge, right? In everything going on in our country and in this world, we see a lot of things that come about as misinformation, conspiracy theories, and mass media lies and so forth. And I'm putting this out there because what happens is, is we stop trusting. And there we go. There's that first letter that I used for the term together was trust. We stop trusting in our fellow brothers and sisters. We stop trusting in the words that we are hearing because how can this be true? You have not given me the truth. Yet Christ gives us the truth. So if we're going to trust in something, let us trust in God. Let us trust in Christ. Let us trust on the word of God. Okay? E was for everlasting. Right? And in his everlasting love for us, Christ sacrificed his own life for our forgiveness, for our redemption. Eternal. We are looking to live with Christ, with God the Father, eternally in heaven forever. H was for help, right? Who is our help in times of need? Who do we tend to as Christians go to in our time of need? But we pray, right? We pray, Lord, please, if you, and we always offer up something, right? If you would just please help me this one time, I will stop doing this. But the problem is the Lord already knows what's on our heart. And he knows that we're probably not going to stop doing that. But in some cases, he answers our prayers and he gives us our forgiveness and he helps us out of that bind or whatever it is. Because the words and wisdom really go well together, especially in times of trouble, when we're at a loss for words. Words and wisdom go together well when we're at a time where we couldn't think of what to write for the paper. We couldn't think of what to write for that sermon, that essay, whatever it might be. Because we are supposed to listen, as scripture tells us today, for God's words and for his wisdom to use them well. We even see... In 2 Thessalonians today, Paul, Silas, and Timothy give that warning about becoming idle. And what they use for the term becoming idle is not putting forth the work enough, right? Because ultimately, in order for us to do this, there's work involved, right? And we got to work together and harmoniously. It goes back to the whole love thy neighbor as thyself. We have to work together in in one harmonious blend. Paul and Silas and Timothy sit there and they said that there are some that hear... that are living disorderly manner, not working at all, but are busybodies. Now those who are such, we command and exhort through our Lord Jesus Christ, that they work in quietness and eat their own bread. But they say, as for those brethren in Thessalonia, do not grow weary in doing good. Now think about this for a second. We talked about the truth. We talked about the word of God. We talked about together. Together with Christ Jesus. Together with God, the Father. How do we walk together with Christ Jesus? How do we walk together with God, the Father? 
if we can't walk together with our brothers and sisters in peace and harmony. If there are those out there that sit there and idle and willing to not lift a finger, not put forth the work, yet we've come to learn that it takes work. It takes a little bit of effort, right? I mean, Christ is going forth in his day and age, predicting the future of the end of the age. And he says that there's going to be those that are going to come forth and say, I am he, I have come back. But they're not him. They're not the one who brings forth that redemption. They're not the one that brings forth that love and that relationship. They're not the one that's going to give us eternal righteousness in heaven. Paul and Silas and Timothy warn the church in Thessalonica about putting forth works and continuing to do good plowing the fields for food, and so forth. What's different between that and nowadays when we need to do acts of kindness, when we need to put forth the work, sharing truth and light, and opening up our eyes to the potential that can come through Christ Jesus, that can come through God the Father, and hopefully showing others in this world the same. But it comes back to the same thing that we sit here in the flesh and we sit here in what we know on the term together. And we look at it from the vision and the standpoint of not words and wisdom, not prayer, meditation, Lord Jesus Christ and God the Father, but from the standpoint of who belongs with who and what is right and what is wrong based on the eyes of the flesh. What's right and wrong based on the eyes of this world. And yet far too many times we allow ourselves to become idle. To just sit there and accept and absorb the bare minimal of faith, of scripture, of truth. But be able to be persuaded by evil that comes into our lives. Those that might profess to be the one when they're really not. Those that might profess to have their answers when they really don't. I'm not one to sit here and say that I have all the answers. I'm not one to sit here and say that I'm the best with my words. I'm not one to sit here and say that today of all days, that I knew what I was going to say before I started speaking. What I can say is I relied on the truth. I trusted in my God. that He would provide the right words at the right time with the right wisdom to pull forth to get through today's message and to ultimately bring forth light and love. And I'm looking down as I flip back to Isaiah 65. And Isaiah verse 65, and we're going to pick up reading at verse 20. No more shall an infant from their life but a few days, nor an old man who has not fulfilled his days. 
For the child shall die 100 years old, but the sinner being 100 years old shall be accursed. They shall build houses and inhabit them. They shall plant vineyards and eat their fruit. They shall not build and another inhabit. They shall not plant and another eat. So here we're seeing in Isaiah the same similar thing about putting forth the good works putting forth the work and effort and trusting in our Lord. Helping those in need. Continuing to love one another. Continuing to spread hope and joy. And ultimately continuing to stand firm on the truth from Scripture. The truth on which God has given to us. Brothers and sisters in Christ, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for the scriptures that we have read this morning. We look to you for your strength, wisdom, and discernment in all that we have read. Help us to breathe it, to live it, and to be it in this world. Helping being the truth, the light, and the hope to others. Help us bring a new meaning to the term together. Not just brother to brother, sister to sister, brother to sister, and so forth. But the term together in meaning of you, Christ, and Father to us. To our spirit. That we may live on in truth through you and in righteousness. So we might have that eternal life in heaven someday. We ask this all in Christ Jesus' glorious name. Amen and amen. Our next, our final hymn for this morning is soon and very soon. Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Soon and very soon We are going to see the King Hallelujah Going to see the King Hallelujah Hallelujah we are going to see the King. No more crying there. And we are going to see the King. No more crying there. We are going to see the King. I said no more crying there. And we are going to see the King. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah, we are going to see the King. No more dying there, we are going to see the King. And no more dying there, we are going to see the King. And no more dying there, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah, that we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Soon and very soon, we are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the King. Hallelujah, hallelujah. We are going to see the King. Amen and amen.
um, in, and I apologize for my small jumble of the lyrics. Let us pray. God, our God, you hear our cry and listen to our prayer. Grant that we may know that our Redeemer lives and trusting in you. Be confident that we will not be lost or forgotten. We ask this in the name of Jesus, our Lord and Savior. Amen and amen. We turn once more into our blue hymnal for our doxology. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise him, all creatures here below. Praise him above the heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord turn his face toward you and be gracious to you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and give you peace. Brothers and sisters in Christ, go in peace. Amen and amen.